morning. I mean, really, with this, Gary, it, 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 this is so desperate for Forrest. He's just sort of sunk without trace, in a way. Well, there's a, you know, a lot been going on at the club. We know Steve McLaren was there and left pretty quickly. Billy Davis left in acrimonious circumstances after falling out with the chairman of the board. And he's just gone downhill a little bit since then. There's no stability there at the moment. I think that's why Steve Cossel has been bought in. Um, but at the moment, things uh, don't seem to be working. Uh, they've not scored at the city ground since November the 19th, I think. So there in itself tells you what half the problem is. They cannot score goals. They've got no striker who last season uh, got near Lewis Magoogan. He was top scorer, a midfield player with 13. Um, and I, I just think he needs a bit of consistency at the moment. Maybe just pick a, a settled side if he possibly can and uh, give them four or five games just to see if he can gel together and then you know, dig in and then you know, eat results out because at the moment he's looking pretty sorry for them. Well, just to make matters worse, absolutely battered in the FA Cup by local rivals Leicester. Yeah, it could have been eight or nine apparently. Uh, I think Forrest had one shot on target. Um, we saw the miss from Young Findlay as well from right underneath the uh, crossbar, put it over from about a yard. And those things, you know, compound everything that's going on. You know, you, your shoulders shrug, your confidence goes even more, and, you know, they're desperate for something. They went to Ipswich and won 3 1, and everybody thought, well, that's it, that's a turning point. But since then, it's just gone from bad to worse. Southampton 3 0. Chambers getting sent off. He's suspended at the moment. Morgan's out injured, so you've lost your two main centre halves, who've been the stalwarts of the side. So you've got two players in those positions who are going to West Ham today, you know, not really centre halves, maybe. So West Ham will be looking at that, I'm sure, to try and exploit that. But first, we've got to dig in and say, right, we're playing West Ham. You know, that, you know that, the expectation level on them is very high. Let's just go and be positive, you know, and, and get into them. It might surprise them. Gary, I mean, I, I know they had a horrendous way to go going back 10 years that you tried to whittle down as well. But is the job a poison chalice and are they forever living in the past for us? Um, I don't think it's a poison challenge. I mean, you, you think the Brian Club thing, you think? Well, I mean, you're just forever living on past glories. I mean, at the end of the day, our, our fans got to be realistic and think, well, you know, we've cut the wage bill, we are where we are, and we've got to get on with it and try and build for the future, rather than thinking we should be somewhere where they're not. That's exactly. I mean, Manchester United had that for years after Matt Busby, didn't they? They struggled to get things right, to get the right man in. Finally, they got it right. They, they were in the championship as it is now, the League One. But they turned it round and look what Sir Alex has done. I know they're a bit off. Um, but I think you're right about the expectation levels because it's, what, 30 odd years ago since the second European Cup. And, you know, people still remember that. So you have seen them go so close with Billy Davis, you know, got the playoffs two seasons on the trot, lost both playoff semi finals. And I, I just don't think money was spent at the right time for Forrest when things were going well. The chairman, fair play to him, put 70 million quid of his own money in. You know, and that's for one bloke to put in, even though, you know, he's. He, he, very wealthy and I think he finally thought well he's getting a lot of stick enough um, and I think he's at a board in, in January in those two seasons as Billy wanted to uh, things might have been a little bit different but they, you know, historically they've never spent in January and that's cost them season after season um, but it's, is it all just about spending money because it sounds to me with Billy Davis and Steve McLaren as you mentioned uh, coming in and out um, Surely, um, I don't know the chairman very well, but I mean, he's, he, you said he's put £70 million in, he, he's certainly a, a local British man and what have you. Surely, um, he made it clear to Billy Davis and to Steve McLaren that there obviously wasn't this money to spend. Well, th this is the £64 million question, isn't it? You know, I, I think the, all Forest fans wanted to hear coming out of the club was a bit of honesty, saying, you know, where, where, where are we, where do we stand, what is the situation, why isn't this money being spent, who's telling the truth? And it was a war of words between Billy and, and the board. And uh, it sounds, you, you read between the lines, it looks like Steve McLaren was maybe promised money to bring people, uh, players in. That didn't materialise, and that's why he left the football club. But only the people involved in that club will know exactly what's going on, and that's a frustrating thing for fans. Well, it's a great shame for the fans, and um, you know, they've somehow got to show some sort of form. It's the toughest well, league to try and do that in as well. Without doubt, well, you just have the playing club way at Derby County. Well, a great job, Nigel Clough's doing there. You know, he's yeah. got no money to spend. He's had to get the weight bill down unbelievably. At 39 pros when he, was, when he first went in. And the weight bill was horrific, and he's got that right down. He's now got his own team, his own players, and look where they are. You know, you know he's not got a money to spend. So maybe look at that uh, model and see, you know, if you can emulate that.